So we are going to talk about how to find maximum and minimum values of a multivariable function bounded in a certain region. And to do that, we're going to look at the single variable case to start. And then we'll take those ideas and transfer them to multiple variables. So let's say we're looking at the function f of x equals x squared. And we want the maximum and minimum values within the range negative 1, 2. If we look at our function f of x equals x squared, and we have the bounds negative 1 and positive 2 here, what we want to find from single variable calculus is first the critical points. The critical points are the places where f prime of x equals 0. In this case, because f prime of x equals 2x, that's going to be where x equals 0. And we see that that shows up right here at the origin. The reason critical points are important, places where the derivative is 0, is they're the only places where we can have local minimum and maximum values for a smooth function. In this case, we see that the function goes from decreasing on one side to increasing on the other side. And that's what a local minimum means. Because remember, the function value has to be bigger on both sides of that point. On the left, because the function is decreasing, it's going from smaller to bigger values in the negative direction. Similarly, when it's increasing on the other side, it's getting bigger in the positive direction. So therefore, we have a local minimum. That only happens in places where the derivative is equal to 0. The only other thing we have to check in this case after we have the critical points are the boundaries. These points negative 1 and 2. And the reason those are important is because even though the derivative is not 0 here, the function could have been increasing, increasing, increasing up to that bound. And even though the values are bigger on the outside of that boundary, that doesn't matter because we're only looking inside of the boundary. So we have to check those bounds in case that function has been increasing even though the derivative isn't zero. In this case, we can see that our point at the origin is the minimum, the absolute minimum on this region. And this point here at x equals 2 is the absolute maximum for our region. Now we're going to take a look at the multivariable version of this situation. So now we're looking at a multivariable function, f of xy equals x squared plus y squared. And we're looking at the maximum and minimum values within the region bounded by x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1, and y equals 1 minus x. So just like before with that parabola, where we had to figure out the region we were looking at before we found all of our critical points and stuff, in this case, we need to figure out the 2D region we're working with. x equals negative 1 is going to be this line here. y equals negative 1 is going to show up here. And then we have the line y equals 1 minus x. And these are going to intersect at three different places. Right here, we have the point 2, negative 1. Over up here, we have negative 1, 2. And then down here, we have negative 1, negative 1. Inside this triangle is the region we're trying to optimize. Now the first thing, just like with single variable functions, that we have to do in this case is find the critical values, the places where that function is flat, so that we can figure out whether those are local minimum or maximum values. And I'm going to hop into MATLAB for a second so we can get a visualization of what those critical values mean. So here we can see two different graphs. On the left, we have the function f of x equals x squared. And on the right, we have the multivariable function f of xy equals x squared plus y squared. Now, when we look at the function f of x equals x squared, we know that there's a critical point at the value where the derivative f prime of x is equal to 0, which in this case happens to be the origin. And we want to take that idea to the multivariable example. What we notice is that this red point down here looks like it should be a local minimum because everywhere in a region around that point has a greater function output. At that point, what we can actually see is from any direction we look, the derivative at that point is equal to 0. That is a completely flat surface. And that comes from the fact that the tangent plane also is flat. Now, the way that we can determine whether a function in a multivariable case is a critical point at a particular position is based on its first partial derivatives. If f sub x and f sub y are both 0, then any other direction we're going to go in 
has to be some combination of an x and a y direction. So if both of those values are equal to 0, then no matter what direction we're looking at, that derivative is going to be flat at that point. And therefore, all we need is that both the first derivatives are equal to 0, and we know we have a critical point, which is a potential maximum or minimum. So we know for a critical value to have our function be flat, we need the partial derivative with respect to x, which in this case is 2x, to equal 0. And we also need the partial derivative with respect to y to equal 0. When both of those are equal to 0, then we have, in this case, the point x, y equals 0, 0, our critical point. This is a point where both the derivatives are 0, so it potentially is a local maximum or minimum, because the function could go from decreasing to increasing at that point. This is the only critical value we need, that point 0, 0. But now we have to think about checking the boundaries. Remember, for a single variable case, all we needed was the boundary on the left and the boundary on the right. But in this case, it's not that simple. We have three different boundary lines rather than boundary points. So what can we do about that? Well, what we have to do is remember, just like in a single variable case, our function could have been increasing, increasing, increasing up to the edge of this boundary. And the only way that we can check that is by looking at the boundary itself. So let's take this line as an example. We know this boundary is the line y equals 1 minus x. So to find out if there's a minimum or maximum on that boundary, what we can do is take our function x squared plus y squared and plug in y equals 1 minus x. So we get f of x equals x squared plus 1 minus x squared. And we can find the critical values for this function and add those in as points to check for maximum and minimum values. There's one other thing we have to look at, which is that each of these boundaries, like in the case we see here, looks very much like a single variable optimization problem. But if we're looking at a single variable optimization problem, along this boundary, we have to check the edges, the boundaries of the boundaries, which are these three corners. Those also could potentially be the maximum or minimum values, because even along the boundary, that value of the function could be increasing, increasing, increasing up to that final corner. So we have to check those. We have these different points. Remember, we'd also have to check the boundary lines for x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 1. And once we have all of those points, we can check the critical values of our original function, the critical points along the boundaries, and all of the corners. Whichever one's the smallest will be our minimum, and whichever one's the largest will be our maximum.